Welcome back to another video folks. Slightly different one from me today. Uh, I'm doing this one just to form a bit of a reference video. So it might be that you've watched other videos on our channel and something didn't quite make sense and hopefully this video might answer some of those common little questions, okay? We're gonna get straight on with it. We're gonna start by tying into the rope. Sounds simple, but we've gotta get it bang on, haven't we? We're setting the standard here by producing a perfectly neat textbook knot that just sets the scene for everything else that we do. If you look after these little things, then the big things get looked after, don't they? And that's key in climbing. All right, so yeah, tying with a figure of eight is what I use and it's what I teach. I grab the rope, I measure it out to the opposite shoulder. I'm gonna tie my eight there. So it's one wrap, another wrap, and then bring it through that strand there. Okay, that gives you a, an eight. That's what we're after, a figure of eight. And we're then going to put it through our tying points, the top one first, work on down, then through the second one. And we're now going to follow this strand around, re-threading it. That's what it's called, re-threaded figure of eight, keeping it, importantly, nice and neat the whole time. We're just working it around, keeping them parallel, little tram lines going on. Okay, at this point, I get that nice and neat. Okay, it looks like a figure of eight should look. I've got a tail, that's a good thing. I'm gonna tie myself a stopper on there as well. One wrap, two wraps, poke him away, okay? If it's a bit fiddly, that's good because you'll end up with the perfect length little tail then, I reckon. Okay, what we've got there is a figure of eight that looks like a figure of eight. There's no odd crossings, there's no gaps in between the knot, it's all nicely dressed and we've got a stopper knot that is touching the original knot, okay? So there's no gap there that can be possibly clipped into by mistake or catch or anything. I like that. Of note also is the original uh, belay loop is the same size as your tie-in loop. You've matched them up and that's good. We don't want it too short because it pulls your harness together funny. We don't want it too long because we're going to use that loop to like clip into and clip our belay plate to so it will flop around a bit if you get it at an unmanageable size and also it's just another thing to catch on stuff so get that dialed right from the get-go okay when you and your mate have done this buddy check every single time whether you've been climbing a week or 30 years buddy check buddy check buddy check is absolutely vital all right Buddy check everything, the belay plate, all this, all harness is done up, but the, the knot is a fundamental part of that, isn't it? So figure of eight's tied in nice and neat. A knot, neat knot is not a knot at all. Remember that phrase, say it 10 times in a row if you can. Okay, so the, the other knot we want to know is actually a hitch, it's a clove hitch. So I'll show you one time and then we'll talk through it. Clove hitch, great. So what I do, is I grab the rope, I grab the rope with my other arm and the arms are crossed. My fists are punching away, and my knuckles are facing up and I keep that orientation now, that's key. And there's a bit of slack in between the two. I uncross my arms. Great, we've been left with two ears there, haven't we? That one slides behind the other one, gives you your clovage. Okay, cross over, slide behind. If you teach it that way, Honestly, you'll find that people pick that up so quick that within two minutes, they'll be doing it with their eyes closed and giving you a clovage. Within three minutes, they'll be doing it behind their back and giving you a clovage. Just because it's such a muscle memory kind of thing, don't have to look at it and think about it. Just grab it, uncross, bosh, you've got a clovage, brilliant. Why do we like it? Well, because one, it's quick, you can do it really simply. We can put it into stuff, great, such as that belay that I've just built, whatever it might be. And it's super adjustable, yeah? You can just grab this middle strand and you pull one side more than the other, depending on which way you want to tighten it. And then you pull the spare strand to take the slack out of it. So you can get it tightened up really quick. If it wasn't quite right, where well, you come back to it, you adjust it the other way, great, happy days. It's all about that middle strand there that crosses between the two, pulling one side more than the other. It also comes undone really easily when you've uh, weighted it. You can just wiggle it a bit and slide it out of the carabiner. So that's really good. Brilliant climbers knot that's actually a hitch. Next up, I just want to think about belay. I'm not going to show you how to belay. I want to show you how to load the belay. It sounds really simple, but we want to get this dialed as well. Anchors are on my right and my climbers beneath me because I've just led up the pitch in this case. So I want to load the plate with the teeth facing out that way. 
And I also want the back bar of this carabiner facing up, and you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to clip that into the rope in the right orientation straight away. I've taken in the rope down to a mate, they're waiting down there ready to climb, I'm going to load it in. I'm going to load it in without taking this off or unclipping anything now. So I put that in, I'm just going to literally fold that rope into the carabiner. Even if you're doing this at ground level where dropping it just doesn't matter, if you get into this habit it just becomes completely normal and you never do it any other way so you'll just never drop that belay plate. And that matters when you're on a sea cliff route or a big multi-pitch route, doesn't it? We don't want to be dropping that. Might hit someone, might lose it, it's expensive. Don't want to do it. I want next to look at how to tie off a belay plate. All right, an ATC works for a bug, works for a reverso, any sort of style of this belay plate, okay? I'm gonna take it in tight, and we're gonna tie off around the back bar. Why around the back bar? It's because this is the braking position. <clears throat> Excuse me. You can see how you've got the Z shape in the rope. That's what we want to maintain. So you poke a little loop through that carabiner and you poke a little loop through that and you make it bigger. It's a slippery hitch. We want it to be slippery. Get that nice and neat. We're then going to go through the carabiner again, trapping this rope as well. That is a half hitch. Okay, and one more of those. All right, a slippery and two half hitches. That is super solid. I've been left with a loop that is a hand sized or bigger, so there's no chance of it working its way back into the knot or anything like that. To release it, it's gonna work out that first one. Okay, and then you're gonna grab the whole belay device and just grab it with a proper bear claw grip here. Work out this, the original knots, the half hitch is going. Get that strand and just work it through, pop out the slippery, and there we go, we're good to go. Do whatever you need to do. So just do that one more time. Okay, so that's us hands free. Reverse it. And there we go, good to go. So having this part facing up makes this much easier for you because otherwise you're kind of having to do it underneath because you want to go around the strong part of the carabiner, not the slightly weaker part. There's other ways of tying off a belay plate, right? For me, this is the best way, because when you've tied it off and it's all behind, this rope is all free of knots and clutter. Because if you're going further, which we do in some of the other videos, into self-rescue stuff and hauling, for example, you need this bit free to put prussics on and bits and pieces. So by tying off around the back, you've remembered the best way and you've learned the best way to do it, really, because it just works in all situations. If you do it another way, that's fine. It might well work, but this is the way for me, okay? When we take this rope out, we can do the same, can't we? We can get the rope out, and this is the bit when people drop the plates because they pull the rope, and if it's not a skinny rope, it sort of goes pop, and that's when people can drop a plate. But if you keep it all clipped in, you can't, right? But, oh, I've dropped my belay plate. What are we gonna do? I think there's one more really useful knot that again is a hitch that we'll cover off in this short video that I think is really good. So it's almost a clove hitch, but it's actually an Italian hitch this time. So we do exactly the same for tying a clove hitch, which is great, isn't it? Because there's less to remember, all that knuckles uh, pointing upwards, fist punching away. Uncross, but this time instead of sliding, we're closing the book. That's how people remember it. So you do the same start, but this time we're closing the book to give us an Italian hitch. So I'm gonna put that into the carabiner up here. Game shut. It's an HMS carabiner. When you're pulling on an Italian hitch, it slides one way and it will slide the other way, but it will flip through first mm -hmm. and we need it to be able to flip through. If you're using a small D-shaped carabiner, especially on fatter ropes, it may well not be able to flip through because there's not enough space. So by having an HMS, it's always got the space to flip through and not cause you issues, okay? 
I want to look at tying this off as well because this is vital to some of that self-rescue stuff that um, well, I've got other videos on. So my mate's fallen off. This time, it's a little bit different to the ATC because the braking position for an Italian hitch is ropes parallel, okay? So we've got to maintain that bit, but it's still really similar, thankfully. Okay, a slippery hitch, two half hitches. Quite like this, look at that. One, two, three, four, five strands of rope. That's the same as your hand grabbing a rope, isn't it? So that's a nice way of looking at it and visualizing it. That's why we do two half hitches. Get rid of the first half hitch. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one more time. Little loop, little loop, turn it into a bigger loop. Slippery hitch. Cross around both strands of rope, pull it through, neaten it up, half hitch. One more of them, half hitch. Get it all neatened up each time. That's our locked off Italian. Release it, get rid of the first one, and then just grab the whole Italian hitch with that strong grip, similarly to the ATC. and just pop it through. There we go, An Italian hitch, tied off and released as well. So what we've, have we done on this video, we've tied in super neat, like textbook perfect. We've loaded an ATC without the potential of dropping it. We've tied it off and released it. We imagine we have dropped it, and we've used an Italian hitch to belay from instead, and sometimes you'll use an Italian hitch on purpose instead of an ATC. And we've tied that off and released it. So there's a few fundamental things there that we just want to get completely dialed. So they're completely second nature, they don't require any thought at all. As usual, fire away with any questions in the comments or via social media of any description or emails or whatever. Always happy to answer questions as best I can. Much appreciated if you can take the time to click that subscribe button, it really helps. If you've liked the video, click the like button. Find us on Insta and, and Facebook if you haven't already done so. You should have done, get on it, follow us on them as well. Uh, if you've got any requests for videos, again, fire away with those as well. Thanks very much for watching. More videos coming up very soon.